Welcome to Volcano. Now. In this video, we are going to talk about undersea volcano eruptions that will blow you away. Volcanoes can be found in both deep ocean waters and on the surface of the globe. They can even be discovered in shallow seas. You can learn how an underwater volcano contributes to the formation of an ocean's features by watching this video. Recent aeroplane traffic was severely impacted as ash from the Iceland volcano spread throughout Europe. Such volcanic outbursts have resulted in the destruction of several cities and villages. Depending on the location and other geographical conditions, the type and intensity of volcanic activity vary from one place to another. The eruption may take the shape of a fire fountain, an intermittent lava flow, or the development of enormous clouds of gas and ash. There are other additional types of eruptions as well. Most people are unaware of the underwater volcanoes that are located in shallow or deep waters, since their eruptions do not have an impact on the lives of ordinary people. Submarine volcanoes are volcanoes that are located beneath the sea. There are at least 1,500 active volcanoes on the planet's surface, but more than 10,000 volcanoes are thought to exist in the Pacific Ocean alone. Submarine volcanic eruptions are common in rift zones where crustal plates are produced. All of the Earth's major ocean basins contain rift zones that are known as seafloor spreading centers because they are locations where tectonic plates are drifting apart. Since the majority of seafloor spreading centers are located at depths more than 2,000 meters, deep undersea eruptions account for around three-quarters of all volcanic activity on Earth. These deep explosions impacts are visible from the ocean surface. So in this video, let's take a look at undersea volcanic eruptions that were caught on camera. How do underwater volcanoes function? We don't really know for the most part. Since thousands of feet of water obscure the eruptions from view, more than 70% of all volcanic eruptions take place underwater, leaving scientists in the dark about their nature. Underwater Eruptions from Tonga's Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano on January 15 shook the country and sent tsunamis barreling across the globe. The eruption was the most powerful ever observed, spewing a plume of debris more than 50 kilometers into the atmosphere and creating an atmospheric shockwave that circled the globe four times. However, it didn't end there. According to a recent study, the ash and fumes that were shooting into the sky also released billions of kilograms of water into the atmosphere. That water will probably stay there for many years, where it might destroy the ozone layer and perhaps heat the Earth. According to Matthew Tuohy, a physicist at the University of Saskatchewan who specializes in climate modeling and the effects of volcanic eruptions and was not involved in the study. The idea that an eruption could directly inject a large amount of water vapor into the stratosphere has not to my knowledge been directly observed, at least not to this magnitude. This eruption has certainly startled us in a lot of different ways. The investigation was made possible by NASA's Aura Satellite's Microwave Limb Sounder. A variety of substances in the Earth's atmosphere was measured by the sensor, which went into service in 2004 at altitudes up to around 100 kilometers. The water and sulfur dioxide produced by the eruption was of particular interest to scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, including research co-author and JPL atmospheric scientist Luis Milan. The researchers were able to follow the plume's growth and global dispersion because to frequent observations from the MLS on the eruption day and in the days that followed. According to the author's paper published this month in Geophysical Research Letters, the plume released about 146 billion kilograms of water into Earth's stratosphere, an arid region of the atmosphere that begins several miles above sea level. According to Milan, that equates to around 58,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools, or 10% of the overall water content of the stratosphere. He claims that although other volcanoes have contributed substantial volumes of water vapor to the atmosphere of Earth, this time the scale was unparalleled. According to him, this is most likely due to the eruption's size and underwater position. According to him, the water will probably stay in the stratosphere for at least a decade. Large volcanic eruptions frequently chill the climate because the sulfur dioxide they emit produces molecules that reflect incoming sunlight. The Tonga eruption, however, might have had a different effect given the amount of water vapor thrown into the air. Water is a powerful greenhouse gas because it absorbs solar radiation. And whereas the water will most certainly persist for at least five years, and possibly longer according to Milan, the sulfur dioxide will disappear in just a few years. According to Tui, 
that could increase Earth's temperature for years and hasten the warming caused by greenhouse gases. We'll kind of just skip ahead a few years. However, Allegra Legrand, a physical research scientist at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, who was not involved with the investigation, predicts that it will take some time to fully grasp the consequences on climate. No one seems to agree on what the overall impact will be, in my opinion. The water will probably react with other substances high above Earth, possibly weakening the ozone layer that shields us from ultraviolet light and even altering air currents that control weather patterns. Scientists are anxiously expecting additional new insights from a volcanic explosion that is shown to be unlike any other they have seen. Legrand exclaims, Seeing these new measurements is exciting. Seeing something we haven't seen before is exciting. Also, there was another instance that took place. Superheated magma from the West Mata volcano causes a dazzling flash of hot magma. In this, a volcanic eruption of superheated magma from the West Mata volcano causes a dazzling flash of hot magma that is blown up into the water before settling back to the seafloor. The magma is about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. Ash and rock are thrown into the lake by the explosion, while molten lava burns below. Near Fiji, in the Pacific Ocean, sits this volcano. Its peak is almost a mile deep, while its base is almost two miles deep. In every volcanic eruption, molten rock from below the Earth's surface, known as magma, rises to the land surface or the ocean's floor. As the pressure on the magma decreases throughout its ascent, the dissolved gases in the magma begin to bubble. When these dissolved gases are suddenly released, an explosive eruption happens on land. Consider the Coke bottle bubbles that erupt when a shaken bottle is opened and the pressure is quickly released. But after the lava hits the seafloor, it continues to be crushed beneath the weight of enormous amounts of ocean water. The Haver Volcano The Haver Volcano, located between 3 and 4,000 feet below sea level, is subjected to pressures ranging from 92 to 122 times that of sea level which scientists believe tempered the volcano's explosiveness and sculpted the diverse types of lava flows. In addition to altering how lava forms, magma interacts with water quite differently when cooling than when it interacts with the air. At 800 degrees Celsius, the water instantly vaporizes when it comes in contact with heated lava. Its quick conversion to steam has the potential to be powerful enough to shatter the lava. On the other hand, when magma is exposed to water, the temperature difference is so great that the magma immediately hardens. This is a process known as quenching. There is still much to learn about the huge region that covers the bottoms of the seas and the marine life close to the seafloors. Around 100,000 seamounts are thought to exist throughout the world, although only a small number have been successfully studied by researchers. You can have a successful career in oceanography if you are interested in studying it. With this, we conclude our video. Let us know what you think about these undersea volcanoes. To ensure that you never miss an episode, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for tuning in.